gear shifts are quick. Jeez, even at like low RPMs, this thing pulls. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2020 Volvo XC60, and this one is a hybrid, and then also the Polestar Edition. So, as always, we're gonna do a quick walk around on the car, then we're gonna take it out to see how it drives. A huge shout out and thank you to Volvo here in downtown Salt Lake for providing us with the XC60. Check out their inventory in the link below if you're in the market for new Volvo. Let's get in the video. Under the hood of the XC60 Polestar Hybrid, we have a two liter four cylinder that is turbocharged and supercharged. Power outputs for the gas part of it is 328 horsepower. And then the electric motor adds another 87 horsepower. Total power outputs are 415 horsepower and then 494 pound feet of torque. Now on the fuel economy side of things, combined it's 57, but the gas part of it is 27. And then in terms of towing capacity, it's 3,500 pounds with the electric range of 19 miles. Now let's go over the front end of the XC60 Polestar. So the thing that I think is really interesting about the hood is this whole like middle part's completely flat, but then they do this kind of like random line here. So it almost looks like a divot on either side. It's just, it's a very interesting look. I hope you guys can kind of see that the lighting is just perfect to capture it. And then we do get the full LED lights and then they call this little thing Thor's hammer, which obviously, I mean, it does look like a little hammer in the lights. And then one of the ways to tell this is a Polestar is that little badge right there next to the Volvo logo and then notice in the front end obviously they make it kind of look like a front splitter which again that's a really cool look makes it look a whole lot more aggressive but I've always loved the design language of Volvos from the front end I think it's just a really good handsome look and it's got kind of like an aggressive look but then also like a luxurious look at the same time let's come to the side here we've got 265 millimeter tires on 22 inch rims which are absolutely massive the rear is the exact same setup now zooming in on to that whole tire and rim setup i love the design of the rims it's just how they're like these little like thin intricate rims it looks absolutely fantastic and you can perfectly see the acabano brakes sorry if i mispronounced that but they are finished in gold which i mean with the black color that this particular xc60 has it's a really nice contrast you also get adjustable olin's dampers and then you do get the polestar engineered front strut bar which obviously is going to help out with performance i love how they've done the fender flares on this that lead right down to a mud flap in the front the rear does the same exact thing now this is the charging port since it is a plug-in hybrid so it's just like a gas cap you just press it open it up and then you can charge it now like i said on the range it's about 19 miles with the hybrid and then if i do take a step back here is your side view on the xc60 here is our key fob on the polestar xc60 you've got the volvo logo there on the back and then that is for the hazards obviously to sound the alarm now on the other side you have all your functions so like you can unlock it and then you can lock it as well and then you have the function to open up the tailgate so all you have to do is just kind of hold that for a moment and then the rear hatch will pop open coming into the trunk of the xc60 you're first going to notice the cargo cover now it has an interesting track so you've got like the track that goes all the way up there so if i like pull it in and then basically what you can do is just you got to angle it right and then it'll just go right up the rest of the track which i mean it's interesting it's a cool little use i've never seen a cargo cover like that now you do get cloth and rubber floor mats for the xc60 and then you give you like a full rubber floor mat for the back there is a little bit of extra storage underneath this little tab right here they also give you a 12 volt in the back and there's a bunch of ways to open and close the trunk so you guys saw the function on the key fob you also do get the function with your foot and then you can press the button here basically and that'll close it and then you can lock the rest of the car with that button and then there's another button on the back so there's like three different ways to uh open the trunk now let's finish things up in the rear of the xc60 pole star so volvo's taillights are super like just obvious they're massive so like they start all the way up here and they come down and around notice that there's another pole star logo right there and then another interesting thing is i'm pretty sure this is the receiver hitch because it's got the little plug-in and everything it's just it's very 
interesting looking so i'm guessing it's one of the ones that kind of like pops up but again pretty interesting and then you do get the dual outlet exhaust here on this and then notice that there are parking sensors on the back but yeah that's everything for the rear coming to the side here we do get keyless entry so one touch and then i'll lock it and then notice that the mirror will power fold in put your hand on the back and then it'll unlock it and the mirror will power fold back out now actually opening up the door notice that we have this nice cloth trim right here Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which I love that sound system. And then you do have the leather trim right here with the contrasted stitching. Really nice look on the door panel overall. Now here are the seats in the back of the XC60 Polestar and they're actually really aggressive for rear seats. I love that they've carried in that accenting from the brake calipers to the seat belts. It's a really nice look in my opinion. Now I am gonna step in. So stepping in to the rear here, Step in height, it's actually pretty easy to get into. Now, notice that I do get a little 12 volt here in the back, and I guess I could use that as storage. There is netting on the back of the seat. Now, legroom, this seat is not where I'd have it. That seat's where I have it, so notice that there's a little bit of distance between the two seats. So, legroom is actually pretty good. And then in terms of headroom, I'm five foot 11, and I mean, even with this panoramic sunroof, I actually feel like I've got a ton of room, so it's good on headroom. Now, the last thing that is back here is it looks like we've got little center console which if we pop that open there's even more storage space and then if you press this well cup holders pop out pretty over engineered but i like it and yeah i just like the look of these back seats in general coming up to the front we have that same keyless entry so one touch to lock it and then put your hand on the back of the door handle and it's really satisfying like the sound that it makes when you lock it and unlock it but the door panel here in the front notice that it looks pretty much identical to what is in the rear the only difference is you do get some extra controls so you have the controls for the memory seats and then also you get the door lock and unlock and then all of your adjustments for the mirrors and then your window controls now here are the seats in the front so similar in terms of material to what's in the rear they're just way more bolstered here in the front i mean just look at that and then you can see all of the adjustments like notice that that is adjustable there in the front and you can see all the adjustments here on the sides and these controls just look really nice the feel of the seats is actually really nice they're very plush and again i love the accenting on the seat belts the pedals down here have a really nice premium look to them and then you got the release for the tailgate and then i just want to show you guys the back of the paddle shifters because we won't be able to see those once we pop in but so they're pretty neat and then here's one more look before we actually pop in not gonna lie this is one of the weirdest like startups ever so here's the stop start button you twist it to the side and then it comes to life and if you guys listen very closely wait after the beeping stops Hopefully the microphone picked up that like very slight hissing. It's just kind of like a, it's really weird sound. Here is the steering wheel in the XC60. Now zooming in, these are the controls for the center stack, but then also for the radio, you got little pages button for the center stack, your voice commands, which just a weird looking head. I don't know what else to say. There's nice stitching here with the smooth leather, and then you got the piano black trim in the center. Cruise control on this side, and then notice it is adaptive. There's the paddle shifters that I showed you earlier, and then you have the stock for the lights, and then the stock for all the windshield wipers. And by the way, the thing in the back was the receiver hitch because I did get a warning here in the center saying that it was unlocked, so I just had to like push it back up and into place. So it actually leads me here to the gauge cluster. So on the left side, you can see the speedometer, and then on the right side, you can see what gear I am in. And then like I said, there's the little pages that you can pull up, and then notice that it shows different stuff. So you can see that it shows like the trip right now. So like your fuel economy, you got your media, and then it will go over to the phone, and then you also have your navigation as well. Now the phone's grayed out, obviously, because I don't have anything paired to it. But yeah, pretty easy to use, and I like the look of the gauge because it's kind of like a nice, clean look. And then notice that the nav is right there in the center, showing me where I'm at. Before I show the infotainment system, I just want to pop it into reverse to show you guys the camera system. So notice that we do get the little trajectory lines there, and then it does have a couple functions. So there is a little zoom function on it. The tow bar basically just changed it to a towing line. So if you are hooking up to a trailer, it makes that a little bit easier. And then there is a 360 view which I mean, you guys can see, and then you can like basically press on the individual cameras with that 360 view so you can see everything around. And then by the way, if you wanna get out of the camera system, you just have to press a little button at the bottom and then it all disappears. But yeah, that's everything for the camera system itself. Now with the rest of the infotainment system, you do have a little compass here, but then you also get the navigation, which I think it's pretty cool like how detailed it is. So notice that it shows the little clock tower right there. 
notice how there is the clock tower right there so yeah i think the navigation is pretty cool just like how much stuff it actually shows you and then notice that we do have like the car status for example the other interesting thing is the seats so you press the seat and then it'll pop up whether you want the heated seat on or the heated steering wheel which i mean that's just not too crazy the climate system though is pretty interesting so if i press the climate tab itself notice that i can turn it on and then notice that I can have like the climate on automatic basically, and I can have the uh, clean zone or I can do the recirculation. Also, you're gonna wonder, how do I adjust the fan speed? Well, it's this little dial, which you can kind of like put up and down, or you can just press wherever you want. So it's just kind of interesting how it functions. I actually really like it. The response time is good, but it's just, it's different. We have the rest of the controls for the infotainment system, like the radio and all that. And then we have this interesting storage area. So this, I mean, it's just kind of random. And the other interesting thing is when it's all the way closed, it just, I don't know, <laughs> it's so weird. You do get a little 12 volt here. You get a couple cup holders down here. And then this is the shifter for that eight speed automatic. Now you do press in for park. The interesting thing is you have to push up twice to get into reverse and then you pull down, it goes into neutral and then you pull down, it goes into drive. There is a manual shift mode. It will turn on the engine when you go into the manual shift mode. So if I pull it down into manual, the engine automatically will pop on basically because you can't shift gears with an electric motor. It doesn't have gears, but the engine does. So that's just kind of like a little interesting thing. Parking brake, auto hold, nothing too crazy there. The drive mode select is interesting. So to scroll through the drive modes, you have to scroll the dial, but to get to the drive modes, you push this in and then they'll pop up here in the infotainment system and then you can scroll through them. Notice that you have the constant all wheel drive. You got the pure, which is your eco drive. So if I go into that, obviously it's gonna be the most economical. Automatically just turned off the engine. Hybrid, right, for your everyday use. And then you've got the Polestar engineered, which this is gonna be like the sporty driving mode and it turns the engine back on. And then you have the off-road, which it says rough road. <laughs> I think is uh, pretty funny, but yeah, you've got those different drive modes and this is the drive mode select to go through them. Here's the center console. You have the nice stitching here and then opening it up. Notice that you do get the rubber trim inside there with a couple USBs. Closing that, coming over to the glove box, notice that there is some nice felt in here and then you get the nice like trim up here stitching and then you get more trim up in this area. So yeah, overall that part of the dash looks really nice and I love the look of the speaker. Now up top here, we do have the panoramic center. So there's the shade. All you have to do is just press that function and then that'll open up the shade. So if you just lightly press it, it'll do it. If you press a little bit harder, then it'll open up the shade automatically. So like just press it harder and then it'll go like the full automatic route. You have the light controls up here. So just press that little button and then notice they are little LED lights. And then they do a full black headliner here in the Polestar and that's everything for the top. Now that we're done going over the interior on this XC60 Polestar Hybrid. Let's quickly go over pricing. So this particular XC60 with the Polestar package, the hybrid, the big rims, everything that this one has, stickers for about $74,000. That all being said though, let's take this Polestar Hybrid out and see how it drives. Before we set off here in the Polestar, X, well XC60 Polestar I should say, let's talk about visibility. So visibility is really good over the hood. It's actually really cool to see that divot from the interior. There's your visibility through both of the mirrors. It's awesome to see the uh, goldish yellow seat belts. And then here's visibility all throughout the rear, which is really good. It's a bunch of very large square windows. So it's really easy to see out of every single part of the XC60. And that all being said, one, two, and let's go. I'm initially setting off here in the XC60 Polestar and I am not gonna lie, I have been super excited to review one of these for the longest time, just because I think it's such a weird vehicle, right? It's a high -er performance. I would, actually, I would consider it a high performance SUV that's also a hybrid that's supercharged and turbocharged. Like it has so many different things going on, right? The hybrid part of it, the electric part of it is gonna give you instant power and torque off the line. So is a supercharger, but then the turbocharger is gonna give you boost later on. It's just, there's so many elements to it and it's just crazy. By the way, right now I am in your eco mode. So this is the fully electric mode. And all you hear is just kind of like this, like 
it almost sounds like a cold air intake is like the best way for me to describe you just hear this like whooshing basically for the electric part of it but it's so quiet in the cabin like this is this is such like a dual personality car i can already tell but yeah super quiet super comfortable in the cabin so far and just from everything like I don't hear a whole lot of noise coming in. Now the ride quality, I just drove the XC90 before this and this is definitely a little bit harsher. I expected that though, this is supposed to be the higher performance version. So I, I imagine when I get on the highway and take some of those faster like speed sweepers, <laughs> I am struggling to talk today, but those like high speed sweepers, then I'm definitely gonna be able to feel the difference in terms of the handling and the suspension. But so far in this fully electric mode, it's good. And if I like mash on it, it gets up and goes like this thing moves it is quick i can tell you that right now like it even in this fully electric mode it has so much power and torque like i'm gonna slow down again just to just to get that again just a little bit yeah it's it's good now we are, we're gonna go, we're gonna do the fun stuff in just a moment. Actually, before I do the fun stuff, right now I am in the hybrid mode. So this is obviously gonna be switching in between the two. So what this really does is when you're at lower speeds and when you don't need a lot of power, it has the engine off and it'll just be the electric motors. But then when you're up at higher speeds and you need the power from the engine, then it'll use all of it. And this is actually really good. It's really seamless. Like the engine just pops right on and it goes, and yeah, I can already feel the handling difference between this and the XC90. I know that's a bigger vehicle, but just saying. Yeah, I can definitely feel the handling difference. I can also feel the ride quality difference. This is a little bit rougher, but we're gonna push it a little bit more here in the hybrid mode. Yeah, this is quick. This is really quick. It's definitely a lot quicker than I expected. I mean, 400 horsepower is a lot, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect it to be this responsive. So now I'm gonna switch over into the Polestar engineered mode, which is the uh, mode that's the most fun. And I'm gonna go into the manual shift mode. So sitting here in the manual shift mode, those gear shifts are quick. Jeez, even at like low RPMs, this thing pulls. I'm in eighth gear right now, right? So I'm at the highest gear and it, it pulls like this is this is insane wow <laughs> i'm impressed i don't know what else to tell you guys i i knew this was going to be a cool vehicle and it is this is this is actually really fun now just cruising here on the highway it's pretty good with the sound insulation and again i know i'm comparing this to the xc90 but that's just because i just drove that and that's another volvo and this one is not as well insulated you definitely hear a little bit more from the tire noise perspective and again the ride quality is a little bit harsher but overall on the highway i feel like it's pretty solid it's a good driving experience in general and i do want to see what highway passing power is like so i'm going to drop a few gears drop my speed a little bit just to kind of see how this is okay we'll pull now jeez that is quick oh yeah it's quick i can tell you that right now like even the passing power on this is really solid that's kind of funny because that's a volvo semi truck so you can either get this hybrid supercharged turbocharged performance suv or you can get a semi truck from the same car manufacturer now here on this sweeper again it actually corners pretty flat for an suv yeah this is this is fun to drive. Like I could definitely see someone using this not only as a daily, but almost as like a daily that you could also have as a weekend car that you can just have for fun driving. It definitely has that like thrilling driving perspective to it. Yeah, this is this is a weird vehicle. Again, this is very weird. I, I don't know, like I need to emphasize that so much you guys. It's very strange, but it's also really fun. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's just, there's power all throughout. You have power on the low end, you have power on the high end. Like, you always get power with this. It's incredible. I think this is definitely, like I said, this is one of the most fun SUVs that I've driven this year. And 
it's also the weirdest so maybe maybe those things go hand in hand the most fun is also the weirdest you, you know what i mean <laughs> every single time it's like I just don't expect this from a two liter four cylinder. I think that's the hardest thing for me to understand is there really isn't a whole lot of noise. And I guess that is one downside here on the XC60 is that no, you don't get any crazy noises. I just recently drove the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. And I mean, that's the exact opposite. You get all these crazy noises with the acceleration. Where is this? You do get a little bit of noise from the four cylinder, but it sounds just like any other two liter four cylinder. There's not a whole lot of supercharger whine or anything like that. And so overall it's relatively quiet and I've got to get here to like the front of the line so that I can get you guys an acceleration from a standstill. And also we got to go in the manual mode. Ooh, there's totally a cop on the other side of the intersection. So I'm just keeping it cool for now. Yeah, it's so quick. Like you just get instant torque and then you get into the turbos and then it goes again. Like that is crazy. And hopefully my camera caught that 911 GT3 cause those are cool cars. But yeah, it's just, it's so quick off the line and maybe there's not gonna be a police officer in the next light so that I can get a uh, real acceleration. I'm just saying. Well, it looks like I'm not really lucky because I just came up to another stoplight but then there's people here but I'm also gonna try to slow down as much as I can. Just slow down. Okay, this is as close as we're gonna get to like an acceleration from a stop. I think I, think I heard a little bit of tire squeal, just a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's super solid. So off the line, it is crazy. Like I said, the highway, it's got good passing power as well. I, I really like the acceleration feel on this hybrid model. It's, it's really good, just has power everywhere. And that's gonna lead me to summing things up on this XC60 Polestar. This is kind of one of those vehicles that I understand is like a really, really niche product, right? Because you have to almost like really like cars that, I don't know, the best way for me to describe it is you have to love hybrids, right? First and foremost, because you've gotta be okay with not having a bunch of crazy sounds, but then you also have to want a high performance SUV. And that's really where this is at. If you want like a fun, high performance SUV that would actually get really good gas mileage as well. So you could daily drive it, have fun with it on the weekends. Then that is where this Polestar like really shines if that's what you're looking for. And again, I understand it's a little bit more of a niche market, but regardless, I have so much respect for this Polestar XC60 and yeah, it's so fun. So if that's kind of what you're in the market for is a you know, performance based SUV, definitely give the XC60 Polestar a look. And there we have it everyone, the 2020 Volvo XC60 T8 E all-wheel drive Polestar, if you guys are running on like the uh, official name of it. But again, a huge shout out and thank you to Volvo here in Salt Lake for providing us with this XC60. Again, check out the inventory in the link below if you're in the market for a new Volvo. I will see all of you in that next video.